You ever just want to quit your job, buy a boat, sail around the world? Well, what if we told you that was possible? I'm Rad. And I'm Sasha. With more willpower than money and a dream to become pirates, we bought a sinking sailboat and spent the next nine months transforming it into one of the sexiest boats on the seven seas. There is nothing that can get in the way of us sailing around the world. So grab your popcorn, hit subscribe, and be prepared for one hell of a story. The story of our lives. This is the journey of Spirit Animal. We just spent the last three weeks replacing every floorboard in our boat, and doing it on anchor proved to be extremely challenging. We had to cut all the boards off site, which means we had to take hundreds of very precise measurements beforehand. Then we had to transport every piece of wood to and from our boat with our dinghy multiple times. And on top of that, we we're living without floors in our boat for a couple weeks. So you can only imagine how hard it was balancing on beams and water tanks trying to get all this done. Throughout the struggles, they turned out absolutely amazing. But now we gotta channel our energy on something more essential, like finding a source of fresh water. Because right now, we're living on gallon jugs from the gas station. So we're sailing around the world, going to remote places. How are we gonna get fresh water? Very, very good question. Luckily for us, humanity has already conquered it. We now have desalination systems, which use the process of reverse osmosis to remove common chemical contaminants such as metal ions and aqueous salts, including sodium, chloride, copper, chromium, arsenic, fluoride, radium, sulfate, calcium, magnesium, potassium, nitrate, and phosphorus from what some people who are not as smart as me call salt water. I'm just kidding, I memorized all that. But through this process of reverse osmosis, we're left with clean, clear, potable drinking water, which has less parts per million than most of the water that's coming out of your faucets right now. And you know what we call the magical device that does all of this? We call them water makers. Exactly. Now I know that sounded like some scientific bullshit that only Sasha Myers and all of her chemistry friends can understand. So. Let's explain it in a way where us cool kids who like to sit back and take advantage of all the scientific nerd creations can make sense of it all. Sasha? Okay, so in rough terms, basically you take salt water, you shove it through a tube with a filter, and out comes drinking water. Exactly. Take a look at this chart. Salt water, filter, fresh water, Applied pressure, drink up baby. It's pretty simple when you look at it. So when we dug into our research of water makers, there were quite a few to choose from, but we narrowed it down to a few factors. Number one, price, because we're broke. And number two, simplicity, because we're going around the world and we don't want a crazy complicated system that's gonna be difficult to fix. These two factors alone led us to one particular brand, and that is Seawater Pro. It's a Seawater Pro, dual membrane, a 120 volt system, so it'll run off my generator and it makes 40 gallons of fresh water an hour. This is everything unboxed. And don't be overwhelmed because it's very, very simple when you look at the system. Now before we go and install the system, we want to explain to you guys why we went with Seawater Pro. And it just so happens that they're located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, just a few miles away from where the boat is anchored. So we went to go tour the facility. When we showed up, they had all their units on display. They had AC units, DC units, and portable units. They have all the options on their website, but we decided to go with the dual membrane 120 volt AC unit, which allows us to make 40 gallons of water per hour. Now regardless of whichever unit you pick, they all have a few things in common, like no electric boards or circuitry. Which means 99% of the pieces of this unit can be fixed at a local hardware store that sells plumbing supplies. 
Yes, it would be hard to find filters, housings, motors, all that good stuff, but none of it is exclusive to Seawater Pro. They use parts and pieces that you can order off of Amazon or any other website online. And the last reason why we were really drawn to this brand was because of price. The base model for the AC unit that we decided to go with starts out just under $3,000. Now we upgraded to the fancy panel as well as the extra membrane which doubles our water output so ours was just under four thousand dollars now competitive brands that also make around 40 gallons per hour run anywhere from five ten or even up to twenty thousand dollars so not only is the seawater pro a fraction of the price but it's a hundred percent mechanical and you can get parts for it anywhere around the world, which is exactly the type of unit that we want to install in our boat. All right, put it over your shoulder, Sasha. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's just do this. Inside the contents of this box lies our new water maker, and we were extremely happy to go install it. Fresh water, check. Check. We're excited. Very excited. Okay, now let's go install this bad boy. When you first open the box, it can be extremely overwhelming. There's all sorts of fittings, hoses, motors, and crazy parts all over the place. But lucky for us, what's also included is a book of very clear instructions. I know it looks like there's a lot of parts and pieces, but what helped us out is knowing exactly how the system works. And even if you don't have a boat or don't plan on installing a water maker, it's still really interesting to understand how to take salt water and turn it into fresh drinking water. So pay attention. This is the exact same system that we purchased. And to make things simple, we're gonna get back to this part of it later on. Okay, so it all starts when the water enters the seawater strainer, which takes out any seaweed or big particles. Then the booster pump pushes the water through these two filters and on to your high pressure pump. Now we skip past this little line, but all that does is deaden into a gauge that tells you the pressure that your booster pump is pushing at. It's relatively small, somewhere around 15 PSI. But once that water reaches your high pressure pump, this motor turns the high pressure pump and transforms that 15 PSI into around 800 PSI. That high pressure forces your water through these last two membranes which eliminate all the fine salts and contaminants out of the water. From there, it goes to the gauges on the back of your panel. One gauge shows you the pressure of the high pressure pump. The other gauge is a flow meter that shows you how many gallons per hour of fresh water you're making. And then lastly, one line takes all that fresh water and dumps it into your water tanks, while another line takes all the salty, contaminated water and pushes it out through your discharge through hole. Now let's look at the portion we covered up in the beginning. This device ties into one of the pressurized fresh water lines inside your boat. And what it is, is an automatic rinse timer. You can set it to run once a day, once a week, or even just manually turn it on. And what it does is push fresh water through your entire system, extending the life of all your filters and membranes. If salt water is sitting in your system for over a week, it can cause organisms and bacteria to grow. And lastly, these two clear bulb looking things are just check valves. They don't let the salt water and the fresh water side of things mix together. And that is the entire system. It's pretty easy when you sit there and break it down. Now let's install it.
And as you can see, that lever sticks out pretty far. So what I did was make a recessed, I cut a hole in the cabinet and I made a recessed panel right there with Craig Jig. Intake is open, filter is primed, everything is connected. Look at how beautiful that looks. Neat and organized. Panel, everything. We were so happy with the insulation. It went very smooth and we actually did a few extra things like recess the panel, put some vibration dampeners under our motor, installing lights on the panel, and just tidying it all up and making it look really neat. But without all that, it's a fairly simple installation. However, coming from two people that have already installed the system, the hardest part was to get started. So we wanna share some tips and tricks to help you guys get started with your installation. First off, you need two through holes, one to pull water in from and one for water to exit out of. And you don't want these to be 50 feet away from your water maker. Next, you have to find a place to mount everything. And something to keep in mind is that you have high pressure lines connecting your motor to your membrane and your membrane to your gauges. It's much more expensive to extend high pressure lines than it is the cheaper plastic lines that connect the housings together. So it's better to keep these items relatively close to each other. Now, after everything's been mounted, it's time to figure out how to direct all that water into our water tanks. We have one located on the very front of the boat, one on the starboard side, and one on the port side. They all need hoses going to them, as well as valves to control which tanks we want to fill. This thread's in good, actually. Hell yeah. Okay, so we used a half inch drill bit and drilled a hole and this is basically the perfect size. When you twist this in, it almost threads. So uh, we're gonna put a little silicone on here and screw it in. Threads in nicely and it is getting really tight. Beautiful. We installed fittings in the other two tanks and then we made a diverter system so we could control which ones we wanted to fill. Personally, we didn't want to sit there and wait for one individual tank to fill up, change the valve, fill up the next one, change it again. So we racked our brains and tried to figure out a system where we could fill up all three tanks at the same time. And here's what we came up with. So the way I have this rigged up, you might want to pay attention here because I think it's pretty genius. This is our incoming water line right here. So it goes into this T. To be more clear, that's the line that delivers the fresh water we made with our water maker. And these three blue valves allow us to choose which tank we want to put it in. However, with this setup, in theory, we should be able to leave all these valves open and it will fill the tanks in the exact order we want them to be filled in. Okay, from there, gravity is gonna naturally make it go down. And this, is our forward tank. This fills up first. The reason why we want to fill up the forward tank first is because it's centered. If we were to fill up the starboard or the port side, then our boat's gonna be leaning for a little while until we fill up the rest of our tanks. After this tank is full and that water rises to here, 
Then it's going to dump water into these two tanks. This is our starboard and this is our port side tank. So I made these levels so that when water comes this way, both are kind of filling up at the same rate. So our boat never fills up one side more than the other. Once all of these are full, your water level is going to rise and go out of your vent on the side of the boat. And that's how you know all three tanks are full. Although this looks good on paper, only time will tell if our genius plan will work. And now it's time to go start the generator and plug it in and get it started. <gasps> I'm so excited. We have no water right now and we would love to take a fresh water shower. <laughs> okay. It works. Crank her up. Hey. Perfect form. <laughs> All right, manual wrench, a shot. There's water. Water is in the system. This is the fresh water side. We're priming everything with fresh water first so that our, our all of our pumps have water in them because we don't want to turn them on dry. Water going in this filter now. Oh, we didn't put Teflon on these. After all the fittings we attached, it looks like we missed a couple with the Teflon. So we had to take it apart, fix it, and then reprime the entire system. Thanks, Sherry. Filter's primed. Once it was primed, it was time to turn the booster pump on. And after that, we double-checked all the lines once more to make sure we didn't have any leaks, because now, was the scary part. Anyone who's ever installed a water maker has gone through this next phase of emotions. Did I wire it up right? Is the plumbing right? That's a lot of pressure. Is the whole thing just gonna blow up? Eventually, you get to that point where you just have to try it. All right, ready? Ready. Turn this all the way down. Make sure that pressure is all the way down, and then flip the switch. Now we have to build the pressure in the system for the very first time. You have to turn the needle up slowly until it's in the grain. This was a big moment for us. No more showering out of gallon jugs, stealing water out of water hoses, or collecting rainwater from the deck of our sailboat. We now have the freedom to go anywhere in the world knowing we'll have fresh water. This unit is doing everything Seawater Pro said it would. It's making 37 gallons of water per hour at 118 parts per million. That's about as clean as you're gonna get. I mean, look at the comparison. This is a game changer for us on Spirit Animal. Ugh. <laughs> you can get worms like that. I spit it out. Yeah, but, oh my God. Yeah, go rinse your mouth out. Gurgle. Take a shot. Like that's literally how dogs get internal parasites. After talking with Seawater Pro and letting them know that we we're gonna do a YouTube install, they gave us an affiliate link, which you can find down below in the description. Yeah, use that. It's not gonna give you a discount, but we're gonna get a small kickback for telling you about the product. As always, we really want to thank all of our patrons especially our upper tier patrons that get a plaque on the spirit animal. If it weren't for you guys, we would seriously not be doing this. It really helps us wake up in the morning, work and edit our butts off, 
and we really want to thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts. And if you have no interest in becoming a patron, but you want to help us out in other ways, you can always subscribe to our channel, which is totally free, and you can share, like, and comment, which helps us out a lot. See you guys next week.